Hey folks, I'm J.B. Shreve, your host at the Faithful Considerations Podcast, also the End of History Podcast, host both of those. Today, we're going to begin looking at the Manifesto, Life, Politics, and Reality in the Kingdom of God, starting this new series today with Episode 1. The reason why we're jumping into this, we are heading into what's probably going to be the craziest, the most intense, and likely disruptive national election season in the history of our country. All signs point to 2024 being a very volatile, very chaotic year. On the surface, it's a story about politics, right? Joe Biden versus Donald Trump. In fact, a rerun story of politics. But deep down, this isn't really a political story. This is a story of people who are frustrated, people who are angry, even fearful. If you've read my latest book, Politically Incorrect, Real Faith in an Era of Unreal Politics, then you know that 2024 and our national election this year It's really the story about darkness covering the earth. It spreads by more than political agendas and ideology. Darkness spreads by way of hearts opening themselves up to the bait of deception and darkness. Now, the bait of deception and darkness, it's not about Republican or Democratic politics. It's about anger. It's about fear. It's about outrage and polarization. And we see plenty of those, don't we? There's a deeper story going on this year. We're heading into the abyss and things are going to get worse, not better. There will be lots of surprises, lots of outrage, lots of division. But for us, for you and I, for believers, we don't have to follow this descent into chaos, into outrage, into polarization. That's why I'm launching this series today. For the next couple of months, we're going to look at what's traditionally called the Sermon on the Mount. This is what Jesus presented to his followers in the Gospels. When Jesus presented these words, he intended them to upend politics, to upend society. It was revolutionary when he brought these words to to pass in the earth. The very language itself was revolutionary. For his followers, those who believe and obey the teachings of Jesus, he offered a higher way to live, a higher way to respond to the world all around them, all around us. What What we traditionally call the Sermon on the Mount, it's actually the manifesto of the kingdom of God. It's a proclamation, a guide for life, a guide for politics, a guide for reality, from the kingdom of God. Jesus laid down for us a different way to live. It wasn't just for the super Christians. It wasn't for the elite. It was for all of us. You want to escape the the chaos of the darkening, the deceitful world? Then embrace the way of life in the kingdom of God. That's the message Jesus was telling us. This is the message Jesus presented to us, and this is the message that we'll be looking at throughout this series over the next few weeks, maybe even the next few months. I encourage you, just subscribe, follow along. Let this be your your medicine, your, your vitamin of sorts as you encounter the chaotic world around you. At the same time, read along, study with us, read through the scripture, read the passages, Matthew 5 to 7. Read them slowly, thoughtfully, meditate on the words and the principles. Find out what the Holy Spirit is speaking and calling into your own heart, your own life, and your own home as you go through this message. The manifesto of the kingdom is revolutionary truly revolutionary. We usually miss the reality because everything from religion to the simple darkness of this world, it it clouds our mind so we can't see it. This is why Paul prayed in Ephesians 1 that our mind would be open so we could see the truth. These are the words from Ephesians 1, 17 and 19, written by the Apostle Paul. He says, I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, would give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. I pray that the perception of your mind may be enlightened so you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the glorious riches of his inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his vast strength. Do you see that key line there? I pray that the perception of your mind may be enlightened. That's what we want. The manifesto of the kingdom of God that Jesus described in this Sermon on the Mount, it opens up to us a different way to live life, a different way to exist in our societies, a different value system, a different hope, really. Jesus is telling us that the reality, the vision of life that we're born into, it's not real. It's an illusion. There's a deeper, more more real way for us all to be living. I'm convinced one day we'll look back on our lives from the next dimension, the next dimension of heaven, of eternity, and many of us will regret how we didn't disconnect from the illusions. 
the illusions of uh, the deceptions, the false view of life that seems to have swallowed so many of us up. We believe things all around us are reality, but there's a whole other reality out there, a whole other way of living, a complete alternative doorway of life that God wants us to see and walk through. We're invited. We simply have to break the chains of deception that are wrapped around our minds. This darkness blinds us so that we can see what's real and what's true once we get that off. This is the call of the revolution. That is the kingdom of God that, that Jesus Christ proclaimed to us. When, when he touched down the earth in the first century, this is what he was saying to us. And his teachings ought to stir us. They ought to give us hope. They, they ought to change us. But again, they only do that when we shake free of these blinding agents that suppress the truth. That's what I want to encourage you to do as we jump into this series. Don't segment these words into religion or, or just nice thoughts as we review the manifesto of the kingdom. Don't dismiss it. Dare to embrace these words here as living truth, as a different pathway for your life, a different worldview or, or framework to see the world through. The reality is that Jesus presented a revolution to this world. That's the real story of the Gospels. When we get beyond the religion, when we get to the truth, we find ourselves smack in the middle of a political, a social revolution. Even when you dig into the teachings of Jesus and in the, the early church in the, the New Testament, you find the, the writings are packed with explicitly political language, particularly in the original Greek. For example, you've got words like church in the original Greek. It's, it's ekklesia, uh, fellowship in the original Greek, kononia, right? These could have been different words, but they were undeniably political. Jesus and the early church, they used political language because the whole point was a political revolution. Uh, it was a revolution of the mind. It was a revolution of the heart, of society, of the way we live and do life. Unfortunately, when I tell people these words, when I say this, this to them, they often misunderstand. They think of politicized religion. They think of like political Islam or the Catholic Church back when it operated like a state and did all sorts of depravities in the name of God. Not what I'm talking about, all right? That's the opposite of what I'm talking about. It's the opposite of what Jesus in the New Testament talked about. The revolution is political, right? But it's not religious, it's real life pouring from a different resource, driving new operating systems in our daily lifestyle, upending the status quo, imposing on us the will of God, not by force, but by way of the self-sacrifice of our own will. At other times, people think, they think of things like Christian nationalism or the Christian and religious right, also not what the Bible is talking about. When we hear the kingdom, kingdom of God or kingdom politics or a revolution of the gospel, and think of those kind of things, it just shows us how badly we've been brainwashed. Sorry, folks, that stuff isn't the real revolution of the kingdom of God. It's an illusion. Really, it's, a, it's more of a counterstrike from the forces of darkness, those forces that work to stop the advance of the kingdom, the advance of the kingdom revolution. This counterstrike, it's not going to last, but there have been different versions of it since these, ever since the first century. Those ideas have always been out there. The true gospel, it always wins. But those false gospels, those false so-called revolutions, they certainly slow things down, right? I'm releasing the first episode in this series this week on purpose. In the U.S., we're in the middle of what's probably going to be the most divisive and frightening political season in our history. We even have the beginning of it, the kind of the launch nationally with Super Tuesday coming up. But oddly enough, this is being repeated in many parts of the world this year. In 2024, this year, more people will be eligible to vote and participate in their national elections than ever before in the history of this planet. Half the globe, 4 billion people, will be able to vote this year on their preferred candidate at national elections, every continent around the world. But you know what? The same dark trends we see happening in America, they're happening elsewhere. Extremists are rising. Polarization is growing. Anger and fear are ruling the day. And in the middle of all of that, maybe... Just maybe, people are looking for real hope again. People are looking for answers again. People are looking for a real revolution that will truly work. So in this series, we're going to look at the manifesto of the kingdom of God. Matthew 5 to 7 will be our key passages. The most revolutionary message and force that's ever hit this planet. Please, please, please don't reduce what I'm saying here to religion. That is absolutely not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the whole point of the Bible, the whole point of God's dealing with man. This is what God has been working towards this whole time. If you're at least curious, I hope you'll stick with me through this series. 
I guarantee you'll see the Bible differently. My real hope is that you'll, you'll see life differently, that you'll see God differently. My real hope is that you'll break free from those illusions of darkness and, and lies that unwittingly traps so many of us in the mind. I hope you'll see, as Jesus said, what he wants us to see, to know the truth, and the truth will set you free.